Thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, and also with the one who has a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia.
Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land, and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture in the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder, and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken." Here ends the lesson. A lesson from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. 
I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Here ends the lesson. reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you, a stranger, and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who were members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. 
Here ends the lesson.
Today is colloquially known as Christ the King Sunday. While not officially named on our calendar, the readings and colics all reinforce this understanding of the last Sunday of the church year. And with this new season of The Crown having premiered last week on Netflix, I have been thinking about monarchy and royalty, and indeed the very concept of a king. As Americans, we have a bit of an allergy when it comes to monarchy, and we often see it through the lens of fairy tales or as something of an enigma. I remember a few years ago watching the wedding of Prince William and Princess Catherine. There was a moment where the Duke of Cambridge, himself the future king of the United Kingdom, knelt at the church. And that was when this whole King of Kings thing clicked for me. In England, particular, in England particularly, but other Christian monarchies more broadly, the king or queen was understood to be in their position by virtue of divine right. This doctrine does not really exist today, as nearly every monarchy in Europe has a parliament, but the idea is that the monarch was chosen by God to rule and therefore could not be held accountable to anyone but God for their rule. The monarch then became a symbol of God's power on earth, with the church and her bishops being a symbol of God's spiritual power. This still exists in some sense, but most monarchs today do not exercise any real political power. But this is why kings live in palaces. This is why they are surrounded by the finest luxuries. They're supposed to represent not only the best of us, but to also bring to our lives a touch of divinity. But while those things certainly have their place, the vision of the divinity that we have been given in Christ, our King, is not one of ornate palaces. We do not see Christ, a king, robed in splendor, seated upon a golden throne. We do not see one who has known the greatest luxuries the world has to offer. As the hymn says, here is God, no monarch he throned in easy state to reign. Here is God whose arms of love, aching, spent, the world sustain. We see in Christ a king not enthroned, but crucified, not robed, but naked, not crowned with jewels, but thorns, not living in a palace, but buried in a tomb that was not his own. He represents the best of us and is the touch of divinity in our lives. And so when we look upon this king, what are we to gather? As the hymn today says, and the nails and crown of thorns tell of what God's love must be. He doesn't sound like much of a king, but he is a king. He's the kingiest king that ever did king. His majesty is unequal. His glory is unmatched. And yet his method of ruling is unknown in most quarters. Whereas most kings demand things like taxes, our loyalty to a fault, and so on. King Jesus demands things like, die to yourself every day. Pick up your cross and follow me. Love one another as I have loved you. Turn the other cheek. Go the extra mile. Imagine if George W. Bush had walked into the Rose Garden after 9-11 and told a grieving and angry nation that what happened was tragic, but that we've opted to turn the other cheek. Picture the Secretary of State unveiling a new foreign policy that says, when another country does us wrong, we'll give them double reward. And when asked by the press why, he'd reply, because in doing so, we will heap burning coals on their head. We would think they were loony. Now take that incredulity and apply it to Jesus, because that is the policy of this universe. We, a people who often rebuke the goodness of God's love, are not attacked by God. God doesn't visit upon us disasters. God doesn't smite us. Instead, God adopts us. God, the King of King and Lord of Lords, saw fit to take us 
people who often treat God as an enemy and instead invited us to be his children. We call this grace. Just what kind of a king is this? I mean, arguably, the most famous image of Jesus is him upon the cross, mid-execution. And what kind of people are we that we look upon him who's most known for an image of objective weakness and say, this is the horse I'm betting on? A people who see our king beaten, despised, brutally slaughtered, and say, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. But here we are sitting in a church on a Sunday morning where when we could be doing literally anything else, and whether we fully realize it or not, there is something about this King Jesus that calls us deeper. We all invariably bow at the altar of other kings, but we still come here. We still try, poor as our attempts might be, to follow Jesus as he told us to follow him. And we fail, and then we get back up and give it another go. And I'm here to tell you that these kinds of choices, these small daily acts of trying and failing and trying again, these are the choices that make all the difference. When we choose in the face of adversity, in the face of fear, in the face of God's silence, when we choose to follow God, we do something incredible. C.S. Lewis, whose feast day was last week, wrote a number of books which people have come to cherish. One such book was The Screwtape Letters. If you're not familiar, here's a quick synopsis. A demon in hell named Wormwood is learning to terrorize humans, and we learn how he is doing through a correspondence with his uncle, a senior demon named Screwtape. Lewis makes a number of astute theological claims through the mouths of these demons who, of course, are speaking of these things in a negative way. They lament God's love, they despise God's will, and they loathe God's creation, humans particularly. God is consistently referred to as the enemy. And so in one letter, Screwtape writes and says, Do not be deceived, Wormwood. Our cause is never more in danger than when a human, no longer desiring but still intending to do our enemy's will, looks round upon a universe from which every trace of him seems to have vanished and asks why he has been forsaken and still obeys. Behaving as if God is king is a danger to the demons, to be sure. Hell trembles every time a Christian tries again to be who God has made her to be. But beyond being a danger to hell, it is an enigma to the world because our loyalty to this crucified God makes the world scratch their collective heads. The petty tyrants cannot fathom a crucified king, and yet we would have none other. So here hangs our king upon his throne, from which he rules the universe in love and mercy and justice. This is our king, who was too strong for even the power of death, but whose strength rested in his obedience, his apparent weakness. This is our king who died for us and rose again for us. The king is dead. Long live the king. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come come again again to judge judge the living and the dead. dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Holy Catholic Catholic Church, Church, the the communion communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. King of glory, King of peace, I will love thee, and that love may never cease. I will love thee, thou hast granted my request, thou hast heard me. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive forgive those who trespass trespass against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine thine is is the kingdom, kingdom, and the power, and the the glory, glory, forever forever and and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain with us your Holy Spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. 
so clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. this time I invite you to your own prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. Almighty God, God, Father Father of all mercies, mercies, we, your unworthy unworthy servants, servants, give you you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.